having this game on next-gen platforms, uh, you know, an epic Marvel Universe game, I feel like this is one of the most important games in the history of Marvel. Well, the character list is, is huge. Um, obviously, there's over 140 characters in the game with over 20 playable characters in the game, led by the well-known guys like Spidey, Wolverine, Captain America. This game is huge. We're talking about somewhere between 90 and 95 playable iterations of characters and heroes. I think what's great about uh, Marvel superheroes in video games is that um, it's such an interactive medium. Unlike maybe comic books and movies, which are a little bit more passive for the consumer, you can actually really experience being a superhero in a very cinematic, realistic movie-like setting. It's being able to do the impossible. Now you're able to see it and hear it, you know, and control it. I think it just goes back to people love these heroes. They love the history behind them. They love what they stand for. They love how they play out both in films and interactive. And it's just a, really something compelling that appeals to both the youngest of kids and actually adults who've grown up with these properties back in the 50s and 60s when these comics really first hit their stride. They want to see the stuff that they grew up with. You know, they're, they're, they're coming to us and they're saying, look guys, we know the heroes. Uh, don't mess it up. Comic book fans are, are very passionate about you know the the, uh, the characters in the in the comic books and they've been you know really supportive over the last 40 years, translating into our massively successful feature films, animation, and now video games is just you know it's the natural next medium. Given the the scope of this game, we needed the collaboration of a lot of people. So all of us kind of huddled, both as a group and individually, on what we wanted to do with this kind of new action RPG license. Knowing the fact that this was going to be the biggest, most epic superhero Marvel game ever with all the characters we had access to. We needed Marvel's input, we needed our internal design input, we needed our external developer input, we needed the marketing input. There's a lot of challenges when you first start any game project. Um, you have to decide what kind of game is it going to be. Is it going to be an action game? Is it going to be a role-playing game? Working on any licensed game, you want to make sure you have a certain amount of integrity with the characters, with the environment it's in, and certainly Marvel's no different. The story came as a result of the concept of the game. We uh, had the opportunity to make a game that basically included anybody that we wanted from the Marvel Universe. Marvel's done a great job with us in terms of just opening the vault of all the different superheroes. So we can bring in over 140 to a game never been done before. Not on my way. I think that the coolest part about these characters from a fan perspective is how much depth there is in all of their personalities and their different likenesses. We worked really closely with C.B. Cebulski from Marvel and also the writers at Raven to kind of incorporate all of the over 140 characters in the game, the 20 playable. And the result is that Doctor Doom has basically risen to power and uh, reassembled the Masters of Evil. For people that aren't quite aware of what that means, it's this epic lineup of villains. And uh, the premise of the game basically is you can take the giant roster of characters, team them up your own way, create your own custom Marvel team from maybe your favorite characters from either movies or comic books, whatever, and uh, basically confront Doom and all the villains that he's going along with and effectively determine the fate of the Marvel Universe. I think a lot of the comic book fans will love the nods that we give to the comic book universe. We have a lot of different levels in the game that they'll recognize. You might find yourself underwater in Namor's hometown of Atlantis, and then all of a sudden you're in Thor's home world and different places like Asgard. Atlantis was something that we all wanted to do and very early on kind of put up on the board, but I never thought we would get there given you know the different dynamics you have to deal with with an underwater gameplay. Uh, but Raven did it, and then did it, you know, such a fantastic job, both gameplay-wise, physics-wise, visually. It's really stunning. We all know these comic book characters have had different incarnations throughout the years. Some people prefer the old 60s and 70s classic look. There's some new updated stuff. So if you want to be Ultimate Thor, or maybe World War II Captain America, or even the brand new Spider-Man outfit that's out there, you can change all those in the game and actually upgrade those so they have different stats. You're going to be able to mix and match whatever team you like. Or if there's a certain four guys or girls that you like that you want to play the whole way through, you can do that. Of course, the huge difference is the graphics when it comes to next generation. The added bonus being that with the next generation hardware we have, 
all sorts of new technical features and looks and lighting and special effects that make it that much more engrossing of an experience. More geometry, higher intensity textures, uh, more resolution, HDR lighting. In terms of visually, what you'll see here on the next-gen platforms, it's really the most amazing experience video game-wise, both gameplay and visually, that the Marvel fans have ever seen. The online experiences could be really great. I think we're going to have kind of online co-op and competitive mode. And on the online side, as you can really compete and uh, play as a team with your friends, it's going to really bring the intensity level up another notch. And uh, it really shows who's really pulling the weight, you know, amongst the team. You're going to see like one guy's killing all the guys, the other guys are just relaxed, not doing anything. And that will show in this game, uh, in the online competitive mode. Uh, we really haven't seen that in any other games. The mass gamer, the hardcore gamer, they're all going to find something really appealing. I can truly say in my heart of hearts that I think that this is the best Marvel game ever. This has been an idea that we've talked about for years, and it's really a matter of getting the right developer at the right time to make the right game. That's 80% of the battle to me, is you know, if you've got the developers, got the passion, the technology, and the right creative vision for the product, you know, you're in good shape from the get-go. For influence on this game, you know, we looked at the past story arcs that involved the Shi'ar and the X-Men and the Macron Crystal, and obviously the more epic Doctor Doom-centric storyline. A little bit of Secret Wars, Civil War, uh, the Ultimate books, and how kind of real world and stylized those books are. Looking at all of those big epic arcs, those famous Marvel arcs. The challenges on any given game project are really different depending on the game, but usually what you're dealing with is the scale of the game, the scope, how many characters are there, how many unique backgrounds are there? How big is the game in general? How many levels are there gonna be? Do you have effects? you have design that you have to liaise with? You have programming budgets that you have to deal with and making sure that everything fits within memory. The schedule is the biggest thing, making sure everyone's organized and you know who's working on what next. The artist better be creating that art for the levels, you know, weeks in advance of when the actual designers need it. This is the closest thing to a massive multiplayer that I've ever worked on. We're talking about seven or 8,000 unique objects. What we basically do is we start off in concept and we get a sense of what it is we wanna do. And we go to our really good concept artists here and we say to them, all right, we need to, we need to get a sense of what the architecture is gonna look like and what the characters are gonna look like. And we create a book. We do color studies on it so we get a sense of what the lighting is gonna be like. And then we start to actually rough it out in 3D. And it goes from modeling to texture to lighting and then eventually to gameplay and try it all fitted in. And of course the levels is another huge challenge. We have to make sure there's different puzzles or there's different areas in the game where everyone feels like these characters' unique abilities actually shine. We're actually building sets and then we're set dressing them and trying to make them look as cool as we can. Developing a launch title is a big challenge. When we first got hardware, we had to become more and more skilled at creating high quality content, much, much more detailed worlds. That's really exciting. We're learning new things every day that really make games better. We have over 20 playable characters, some that fly, some that fight on the ground, some that do both, some that fight underwater. From a gameplay design perspective, it's a huge undertaking, and getting that to work, getting that to balance, getting that to play really well, is really a testament to the creative talents of the guys at Rave and what they've been able to do with this property. So what we do is we respect what tech needs, making sure that our memory budgets and that everything we build actually is gonna run and it's gonna look good. And they respect us in making sure that, you know, in the end we have a product that looks fantastic. <laughs> The music in the game was something that we actually had outsourced. We wanted to make sure we were getting the absolute best for it. We wanted to make sure we were getting the true live orchestra, stuff like that. 
We actually got a few different composers. We wanted to make sure different parts of the game actually had different feelings to it. So um, if you're in Murder World, let's say, you know, it's kind of got this kind of crazy carnival kind of sense to it. But then, of course, when you're on the shield helicarry, it's very triumphant, very heroic sound. And we really wanted to make sure we had a difference and really matched the different environments you were in. And they did an awesome job. The effects are huge. I mean, when you've got Thor, let's say, swinging a hammer, you can kind of guess what that's going to sound like, but you've really got to see the crackle of the thunder and the electricity on that hammer when he swings it, because they have a hissing to in the beginning of it, and they also just kind of explode. Hello again, my friends. Voiceovers for these comic book characters, as you can imagine, is a tough thing. I mean, it's like everyone has their own idea of what they sound like. I am Uwatu, the Watcher. Listen closely, mortals. Certainly, if a movie's come out, it's a lot easier to kind of judge that, but when you just see these guys on page, it is, it's near and dear to everybody's heart. This one, you started with the characters, and then it grew from there. For an actor, that's the best way to work. I mean, because the characters are the core of it. It's an action game, and everybody likes to be able to jump on the controller and gnash the buttons. But at the very core, this is the story of, of good and evil. Odin's throne will be mine! <laughs> Fellas, I don't care if you like me, but if a threat like this comes again, can S.H.I.E.L.D. count on your help? The world can count on us, sir. It's go time! I will not be defeated! How can this be possible? It includes almost every big Marvel character fighting a million villains. I have achieved my I think it's the best of its type that I have ever seen. Yeah. Try to keep it as little as possible, as close as possible to the Marvel Universe. If you're a fan of the comics, this is this is the comics brought to life right here. There's all these different elements that make it a true action RPG. There's a lot of adventure, there's a customization aspect for your team that really makes it a cool game to play. And one of the things that we really uh, focus on is your ability to determine the fate of the Marvel Universe. We really made this game much more interactive. As you make key decisions in the game, you'll see those reflected in an epic epilogue system. Yeah. And essentially, the fate of the Marvel Universe in the context of this video game is in your hands. It invites the player to live it. Yeah. From a development standpoint, the combat in the game has always been one of our primary focuses. We really wanted to deliver on being a superhero. There are a lot of different unique combat maneuvers. You have Spider-Man who can actually use his webs and fling people up, and you have the thing who can attach people around. Just everything you can imagine for all the unique characteristics of the superhero, the characters you've read about. A couple of which would be the ability to fight while you're in the air. You can also uh, fight underwater. It just makes the game feel more unique. You know, it's not just we have 24 characters with just different skins. Like we really have 24 unique characters with whole new sets of animations and powers. We debuted the game at E3, and since then we've won over 20 awards. Just best action RPG, best of E3, top 10 at E3 on things like MTV, Yahoo, you know, GameSpot.com, and all the gaming things. So we were pretty excited about that, and uh, we're hoping that the buzz continues. I love this game. We really settled to make a game that's massive and has something for everybody. Y'all really rock, seriously. To make this is like incredible. I've got to come to more of these panels. We love feedback from you guys on what you want in the games, and we check out the message boards. Um, Marvel Activision Wraith, we're always seeing what you like, what you didn't like about the last game, and what you want in the new one. Every character's got their own feel to it, and I think that's what's really going to stand out from some of the other action -y type games. For me, it wasn't so much as an actor a thrill as much as, as a comic book. It was like every trade paperback nailed together, you know, all at once. Like, oh wait, oh now this black is. Your skills in battle are quite impressive. Good man to have it was foolish of you to battle me. Yeah. Looks like we're expected. Move out. Yeah. Yeah. 
superheroes just happen to translate into video games just about as good as anything else out there. Certainly no other superhero game out there it has such a massive cast. It's sort of a compilation of everything Marvel. Over 140 characters total, 20 plus playable with some of the popular ones in the movies as well as the comic books. There's just so much variety and personality and superpowers. It's something everyone can relate to and everyone has their favorite. Deadpool is actually one of my favorite characters. Stranded on a desert island, I can only have one, it would be Deadpool. Deadpool's my favorite. He has such a wild sense of humor, like Robin Williams in Red Tights. He's kind of a ninja. He's also a mutant, so he's got some superhuman abilities. Captain America. Captain America. He's kind of the cornerstone. He's got incredible leadership abilities. Uh, he's got great melee moves as well, but he can throw his shield around, guiding it around the level. Every RPG is, that's fantasy base obviously has their sorcerers or wizards, and that's what the role of Doctor Strange is in this game. He is the Sorcerer Supreme. My favorite is probably Thor. He's a big bruiser. He's a, he's a cool guy. He completely destroys and decimates anything that he goes up against. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Spider-Man's, you know, Spider-Man. He's, he's a great guy. One of my favorite things is just swinging around the levels with him. My favorite superhero um, to play in the game is probably Iron Man. Just because he has so many over-the-top, you know, moves. He's got missiles, he can fly. He's in a suit of iron, so he's a pretty strong character, melee-wise. Torch. Um, and Iceman, one of my favorite characters of all time. Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. He's a huge favorite here in the Raven development team. He's got these spectacular change moves. My favorite superhero is probably, you know, the thing. Super strong, rock-like guy that can just grab a baddie and toss him around over-the-top enjoyment right there. Late. When Activision's done testing, people realize that he tested as one of the most popular characters in the game. Especially like Black Panther, he's got kind of a neat style. Is T'Challa more of a prince or more of a panther? I do the voice of the character, the Black Panther, who's also known as T'Challa. He's the king of Wakanda and superhero. Imagine if the leader of the country was also the best fighter and the smartest guy and technological wizard as well as the ultimate physical specimen. You have to go with Wolverine. Wolverine. I like Wolverine. He's got a lot of edge to him. Wolverine is usually always on my team. Um, they've added so many kind of uber moves as his superpower set. Invisible Woman can do some attacks that get people with a force field. Yeah. Storm, um, one of the X-Men characters, another flyer. Obviously, you know, what lightning powers and weather powers are, are the core of Storm's abilities. Elektra is kind of the ninja character. All her moves are a little like Spider-Man, but she's very acrobatic. Luke Cage. Captain America. Silver Surfer. Mr. Fantastic. It's like a parent with his or her children. I love them all. I can't say Spider-Man is my favorite, because what about the X-Men? And how about Daredevil? And am I going to leave out Iron Man? And am I the kind of guy that wouldn't mention the Fantastic Four? There are so many different combat styles in the game. The more athletic or nimble characters like Elektra or Spider-Man, the more brawler characters like Wolverine, Captain America, to the big kind of tank level characters we have in the game. We have character specific moves, about six of them per character, that um, are going to blow people away. So, you know, various uses of web abilities with Spider-Man, various uses of the shield with Captain America, various uses of the hammer with Thor, um, Elektra with all of her projectiles and size and ninja-like abilities, seeing how the abilities work together because combos is a big part of this. Given the amount of characters in the game, the, the player is always going to be exhilarated and on the edge of their seat. My favorite boss in the game right now is Galactus. The coolest part about him is that he's over 400 feet tall, and when the boss battle starts, it's just unthinkable that you'd ever be able to defeat him. And Raven's done this really awesome job of having Silver Surfer kind of swoop in at the end of the day. You're fighting with five guys, there's a really cool mini game, and Silver Surfer defeats Galactus in kind of true to comic form. We have 20 playable characters in this game, but we're actually going to have even more as you play through, so. We can't really say who they are yet, but once you get the game, you're going to be blown away by some of these characters that we're going to be able to unlock. It really feels like you're actually playing the Marvel Universe and not playing a game about the Marvel Universe. Well, you know, now that we're wrapping up the project, I think that everybody, both at Activision and at Raven, is really proud of the game that's been created.